Today we'll be creating a beginner friendly piece of scattered terrain that is sure to liven up your tabletop gaming. I'm Jason and this is the Craft Cave, where artists come together to learn together. But recently I got a few sheets of the XPS foam with the goal to learn how to make epic terrain and share some of those tips and tricks with you from what I learned along my journey, so that you may better apply them to your own crafting experience. So for this project I knew I just wanted to build a simple stone castle just using a few steps just so I could really practice using the bricks and homemade foam boards. Uh, just as a way to really practice using the foam and creating some train with. So the way that I made these foam bricks was by cutting a one centimeter strip out of these boards and then turning them on their side and cutting another one centimeter down just to create nice square ends. Uh, from there I roughly measured sections that about two and a half centimeters long. Now I wasn't super precise with these measurements because I knew I wanted to make the castle look old and abandoned as well as being on the verge of collapsing. Also, I don't have a hot wire table yet to make them all precise or the patience to carefully measure and cut that many bricks out exactly the same. After the bricks were cut, I threw them into a bowl with a lid and some rocks in there and shook them for about a good 30 seconds or so just to put some texture on them. Now you can also just take rolled up aluminum foil to apply the texture if you prefer that method. After the bricks were done and textured, I could start assembly. So I took my low temperature hot glue gun and placed my first brick at the edge of the door and front corner of the castle and then just continued that process back and forth all around the castle until it was built using a 25 millimeter for scale. Now if you're interested in how I painted this miniature that I used as a scale for this model then you should check out this video where I go through my process for painting this miniature. Now once I got to the height of the door that I wanted I made a long brick to the length that I needed to continue the pattern on both sides of the door. To finish up the brickwork, I added an additional layer of bricks around the top and some small battlements on top just to add some interest in shape and dimension. After that, I began to cut out a slot for the steps and shape the stones in front of the castle. Now once I had the rough shape of the stones all blocked out and taken around from the edge, I just took my utility knife and cut horizontal lines randomly across the stone and then took a brass wire brush and scraped away the foam creating some striations in the stone. For the wooden planks, I just took some of the scrap pieces from the bricks and used the brass brush again to put in the grain in the wood. If you don't have a brass brush, you can also just use a pen or a pencil just to sketch in your own wood grain pattern. Then all that was left to do was to glue the planks in place. After everything was assembled, I took my Mod Podge and black paint mixture and painted everything, ensuring I got a good protective layer over everything. Once that had dried, I took this Apple Barrel Matte Black Paint and thinned it slightly just to ensure that I had a thin layer that still completely covered the surface, giving everything a flat black color without filling in any of the details. Next, I took a medium gray and overbrushed over the castle and stone, going about 75 to 80% of the black, leaving the deepest points real dark and shattered. Next, I took just a slightly lighter gray and dry brushed over the model again, just trying to catch all the edges of the bricks and high points on the texture. After that, I took an even brighter gray, getting closer to white, and began focusing on the higher points of the model, just where the light would hit the bricks naturally. You can take this effect as far as you'd like, depending on your preference, or what would fit into the scene on your tabletop gaming. For the wood, I based the planks with burnt umber and overbrushed with a mixture of about 25% burnt umber and 75% yellow ochre, just to tie the colors together and create a nice contrast. For the ground color, I used burnt sienna. After I had all of those colors down, I took a little bit of grass green and made a wash and applied that to the castle and stone. Just to make it look a little more weathered, focusing on the areas where water would naturally flow and pool up. So between the bricks and on top of some of them, as well as around the base of the castle. Finally, all that was left was to take my Omri Painter basing glue and apply it over the ground as well as in the castle just lightly, just to help kind of sell the fact that it was abandoned and in the corners of the steps. You can also just use plain PVA glue for that if you'd like, and I, you can also water it down just a bit too, just to have a thinner layer. Then all that was left was the final reveal. I set out with this project as a way to experiment with creating and building with homemade bricks and boards. And by the time it was done, I was pretty happy with the result. And I really do look forward to future projects using and improving on the techniques that I use here today. I really do hope that you all found this video educating and entertaining. And if you really enjoyed it, I would greatly appreciate you just taking the time to leave a comment on what you thought about this video. Maybe leave some tips and tricks of your own. I'd also greatly appreciate it if you could just give this video a like and consider subscribing. Now, if you did really enjoy this video, YouTube suggests that you watch this video. And until next time, keep crafting, keep learning, and keep believing in yourself.